So I don't know about you, but when I have a guest speaker, I like to know a little bit about who they are and their backgrounds and such. So um, I am Reverend Debbie Moss, and I am married to Reverend Alan Moss, and we've been married for almost 50 years. It'll be May 2nd will be our anniversary of 50 years. And we ended up in Oviedo because our son was in Los Angeles working for the Los Angeles Film and Music School, and he managed to get a transfer to Full Sail in Orlando. And because we have two beautiful grandchildren and a beautiful daughter-in-law and a wonderful son, we decided to move from Tampa over here. We had both retired from Tampa. We were there for 22 years, and uh, we had a, a very successful uh, uh, church, and so we're very proud of that. And so that's a little bit about who I am. I, my grandson is 13 and my granddaughter is seven. And so they're kind of a little bit apart, but they're wonderful children. And I'm sure many of you are grandchildren, I have grandchildren and you know how we are, grandchildren rule. <laughs> so that's a little bit about who I am. So today we're going to talk about staying in your own lane, and I think that today sounds like a pretty good day to stay in our own lane. Being where you are today is certainly requiring a lot of faith. Most of the time we don't even know or think about how much faith we need. For instance, driving requires a lot of faith. When we get in our cars, we are unconsciously exercising our faith. Getting through the current worldwide crisis takes a lot of faith. We have faith that when we drive, everyone will stay in their own lane. Most of the time, people do stay in their own car lane and we avoid accidents. We pray that others will stay in their lane and there will be no car accidents. Do we follow the same attitude in our relationships? Do we stay in our own lanes? Or do we insert ourselves too often in the lives of our loved ones. Is someone trying to get in your personal lane? Even Jesus didn't like people in his lane. We read in John 21, 20 to 22, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said, if it is my will that he remain, what is it to you? Then we also learn about Jesus' family. Jesus didn't even allow his own family to get in his lane. He ignored his family's concerns recorded in Matthew 12, 46-50. While he was still speaking to the crowd, someone told him, Look, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. Jesus replied, Who is my mother and who is my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and here are my brothers. For whoever does the will of our Father is my brother, sister, and mother. He knew that they were there to try to save him from his mission. They were afraid for him because he had angered the Romans and had criticized the religious leaders. They knew what was going to happen to him if he continued down that path. He was sure of who he was and his God-given mission. He didn't want them stepping into his lane even out of love and concern. The Tao, the Tao Te Ching instructs us to have detached compassion and not to fall into the human triangle. When you do jump in, be aware of it and jump out quickly. A couple of years ago, I heard a story. Jeff Bezos, owner of Amazon and one of the richest men in the, in the world, told the story. He was at a college commencement service and he spoke from his heart and his own experience. He said when he was a young kid, he loved his grandparents. And every year, he looked forward to the trip that they would go on. He was excited about the trips, and he loved his grandparents so much. But there was one thing wrong. His grandmother was a smoker. 
and Jeff couldn't stand that. He didn't like being in the car with her smoking. So he came up with this plan. He decided that he would calculate the number of years that she was losing by smoking. Now he thought that she was going to be delighted that he told her that and that she would quit smoking, but that's not what happened. Suddenly she started to cry when he told her what he had done. And then his grandfather pulled the car off the highway, came around and said, Jeff, I'd like for you to step out of the car. And he said to Jeff, he said, you are a very bright boy and you will go far, but you need to learn, you need to learn compassion and to keep your opinions to yourself. Jeff said that that was a lesson that stayed with him his whole life. And this is how we stay in our own lanes. Stay in your own lane. Even if you think someone is headed in the wrong direction, we need to remember that every soul is following their own path in this lifetime. Everyone has their own unique lane. When you feel the need to jump into someone else's lane, remember to focus on why you are here, what you need to learn, and that you created an experience for a reason. Meister Eckhart said, focus on your purpose and have empathy, not sympathy. Help when asked, then let it go. For the person who has learned to let go and let it be, nothing can ever get in the way again. I learned a very important lesson after Alan and I arrived in Tampa in 1997. Now this lesson is about a young woman who apparently was very troubled in many different ways. And she had been caught stealing cheese in a grocery store. And so there was a court necessary, but she wanted somebody else to go to the court on her behalf. So she came to Alan and I, and we were both young and you <clears throat> knew there, and she was asking us if we would do it. So, you know, we said, well, we'll pray about that. So when we got home, we prayed about that. And then we realized that if we were to do that, we would be interfering in the law of cause and effect. So we told her that we could not do that, but that I would go with her to the court. And so that's exactly what we did. We went to the court with her, to be with her. And so I thought that was a really good experience to be as you know young with being able to uh, be ministers and everything. It was very important. So that's how we learn lessons, stay in our own lane. Now in the little book of the Tao of Pooh, they tell a story. At the Gorge of Lu, the great waterfall plunges for thousands of feet. In the churning waters below, no living creature can be seen. One day, a Tao priest was standing at a distance from the pool's edge when he saw an old man being tossed about in the turbulent water. He called his fellow disciples and together they ran to rescue the old man. By the time they got there, the old man had climbed out onto the bank and was walking along singing to himself. The master hurried up to him and said, you would have to be a ghost to survive that. But you seem to be a man instead. What is your secret power? Nothing special, the old man said. I began to learn while I was very young and grew up practicing it. Now I am certain of success. I go down with the water and I come up with the water. I follow it and forget myself. I survive because I don't struggle against the water's superior power. That's all. It's that simple. Stop struggling against life and go with the flow. Stop resisting. We all need to stop resisting. The certainty that nothing can happen to us that does not in our innermost being belong to us is the foundation of fearlessness. 
The Tao expression Wu Mei means without doing, causing, or making, no meddling, combative, or egotistical effort. It means no going against the nature of things, no clever tampering, manipulation, or staying and staying in your own lane. When we learn to cooperate with our own inner Christ spirit and the natural laws <coughs> opting around us, we can reach the level of the Yu. Then we work with the natural order of things and we can live successfully, staying in our own lane. The universe follows that principle so it does not make mistakes. Mistakes are made and imagined by humans. You know, we have some pretty big egos and we have from spirit and the supportive network of natural laws by interfering in the law of cause and effect. Paul Tillich, a famous theologian from the early 19th century, said all self-knowledge is purchased at the cost of guilt. We spend way too much time looking outside ourselves for solutions, and the key to this is that the answer is within. Turn within to seek the truth. Learn to go with the flow with these steps. Compassion for self and others without attachment or agenda. Walk your own walk, and sometimes that is with travelers on the same path. When you feel troubled, know you are still in the right place. Look for the gift of experience. Stillness, silence, and meditation will lead you through your difficulties into awareness. Reconcile with your families if you need it, and stay in your own lane. When you get to a place where you're seeing the positive in others more than the negative, that means that you are doing the same thing to yourself. Someone once said, we are born with an inherent bodily wisdom which helps us disguise experiences that actualize or do not actualize our potential. The Christ spirit within us is that wisdom, called by many names. So take a deep breath, peaceful breath, let go of this burdensome need to maintain pretenses and be yourself. Feel the healing joy of living each day true to who you are. The very best person you can do is to be authentic. Be who you are and enjoy bringing your unique greatness to life. Allow the ones you love to be who they are by resisting the urge to switch lanes. Stay in your own lane. Now let us close with prayer. Living, loving spirit, we take this moment to center ourselves in your loving presence. We trust you for the fulfillment of our every need. Connecting with your loving spirit, we are wise, loving, whole, and free. We rest in the comfort that all of our experiences are here to teach, and we look for the gift in all circumstances. And so it is, and amen. May God bless you all and keep you safe. Thank you again for allowing me to serve you today. Many blessings to you all.